Hi, I'm Tom Peterson from Cheap Trick, and you're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you from backstage or behind backstage at the uh, DTE Music Theater. Of course, us old folks know it as Pine Knob. Everyone knows it as Pine Knob, That's right? right. And we're here with our good friend from Cheap Trick, Tom Peterson. Hi, Tom. Hi, John. It's good to see you again. We did an interview, I think, in 2015. And it was a phone interview, but yeah. there was great information. You're telling me you're from Illinois, but you were telling me about Johnny Cash, and we were talking about Miles Davis and Weather Report and Miroslav Vitus and yeah. Barney Kessel and a lot of names that I didn't expect to, to come out of your mouth talking to a, a seasoned rocker, a Hall of Fame rocker. Congratulations, by the way, Cheap Trick being oh. well-deservedly inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's good to see you again. I want to kind of, the reason I mention all that is because that feature is up there on For Bass Players Only. All that information in the little search thing, just put in Tom Peterson with two S's and it'll pop right up. I bet you you never get your name misspelled, do you? Never. <laughs> never, ever. Never. Tom Peterson with two S's. But one of the things we talked about was your thing, you're kind of known for your 12-string bass and I want to talk a little bit more about that since we're here, we're in person, and I think the way I put it last time was, what possessed you to play a 12-string bass? It's really a four-string bass, but each string is tripled, right? So it's not like one of these 18-string basses where each one is individual. It's kind of like, kind of like a 12-string guitar. But let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, what what inspired you to want to play an instrument like that? Well, I started out as a guitar player, so it's basically a huge rhythm guitar, sort of. So I just just wanted to get a big, really big sound. And I tried it with octaviders and those kind of things, and it right. didn't; th those didn't work. So I just these guys I knew were starting a guitar company, uh, Paul and Joel Hamer. Hamer, right? Joel Danzig and Paul Hamer. Is that Hamer from Hamer? Yeah. Okay. And uh, they didn't. They had a vintage shop or a used guitar shop at that time. And they were going to start a boutique uh, guitar company. So I brought up the idea to them, and they ended up making one for. Me. I got my first one in '77. Wow. I think you said something like, well, okay, we're, we're not really into it, but we'll make you a 10-string instead of a 12-string, and as soon as you realize that's a bad idea, you'll forget all about it. That's but what they said, yeah. didn't turn out that way, no, did it? No, not really. I just started using it, and they, they heard me, and they like, oh, wow, okay, I think this will work, so let's do it. So we went from the 10 to the 12. Now tell me if we can get just a little technical for a minute. E-A-D-G, okay, I think we're all with you so far there. Yeah. But some of them are unisons and some of them are yeah, octaves, kind of like a 12-string guitar, but, you know, how are the strings well, tuned? Well, it's, it's the, the high strings are in unison, so that there's an octave high, higher than a, the, the normal E-A-D-G. So, so there's two strings that are an octave higher in unison. Oh, so it's consistent like that all the way through all four strings? Yes. There's a low E and then two unison higher E's and right. then the same with A, D, and G. I see. Okay. And boy, does that take a lot of muscle and energy and strength and durability to play a whole set like that? I have no idea. <laughs> I've been using one since 77, so it's... I cannot remember. I think another thing you said though was that you have a lot of basses and you do a lot of things but you perform pretty much exclusively with the 12 string. Is that right? That's all I use, yeah. Okay. Just just one or do you have... Well I, now I usually use just one but now I've been going back and forth um, using two different 12 strings. Not back and forth. I'll, about halfway through the show I switch over to another one. What's different about the two? Yeah, it just looks different. <laughs> you know, you know, okay. It's uh, it's it's the, the the one I use in the second half is uh, one of the original Hamer quad bases with the the, the control. Like uh, the first twelve string bass I got was we did the our third record Heaven Tonight, and it's the one that's pictured on the inside. It's a quad bass. They only made five of them, I think total. Wow. So and I, I use that, so it's from seventy. That one is from seventy nine. And you're playing a Gretsch too, right? My main, you were my main twelve string is a Gretsch. Okay, and as I recall, it's orange amps, D'Addario strings. Yes, that's right. Orange. Anything else? Uh, well, I've got a, I've got a bunch of different stuff up there. Uh, I've got a Fender Bassman also up there. Okay. And a uh, really cool Gretsch head. 
But besides that, that's all. What about non-bass players or even non-musicians? Do they just see you as a guitar player or do they recognize that there's something different about what you've got and what you're playing? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. They probably don't yeah. realize it. But we know. Okay, well, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is something very beautiful you and your wife, Allison, have done with your son. You have, by the way, your, your daughter, uh, Li- Lila, Lila, and your son is Liam, who was seven years old at the time that you started this foundation, this organization. He's autistic. You started this movement, music therapy, all that. Why, why don't you tell the folks about that? Because I want everybody to know about that. Well, we started, a, uh, started writing songs for Liam. He is, he's autistic. And he uh, he loved music, but he couldn't really follow along with with lyrics and songs. He would either come in at the very beginning of a song, the first words, or wait until he knew you know in one part or or the very end. So it's just too complicated. He went by too fast. So I, uh, my wife had the idea. She said, "Why don't you just write some songs for fun for him that he can that are really simple lyrically, but are rock songs. They're not you know children's songs. You know." row 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 your boat or whatever you know so i thought yeah that'd be cool so i'll just do some cool sounding tracks and just do a simple phrase that you might want to use you know help me i'm sick or you know whatever hello what's your name what's your name that kind of thing you know so so it wasn't necessarily a little children's theme it was something anybody could relate to but it was very simple there's a quote on the website uh from somebody who said, I hate children's children's music or I hate children's songs, but this is different. This is not your typical. I'm somewhat familiar with the music therapy field, but I've never seen anybody take it the way you've done it in a, a practical way that reaches people in, in a different way. There was a song, Blue, I also yes. saw on there. It's a lot of good stuff. If people Tell everybody the website again, where they can go. It's Rock Your Speech rockyourspeech.com and you can find out all about it there's videos all the information it's uh we have a cd out we have just all sorts of stuff but it's uh we're really have got more involved in the musical therapy music therapy side of it because it that so it doesn't really it's not really exclusive to autism it's really anybody that's had a stroke or whatever it might be it's a lot of you know a lot of you know People are in accidents, and there's all sorts of ways that people use music therapy, and they really don't have a lot of music really to choose from. They've got you know kids or adults and you know older people, and they're and really all they have are little children's songs. You know, Jimmy Crack Corn. How many times can you hear that? <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once is maybe. Enough. How old is Liam now? He just turned 11, and oh, his wow. sister Lila just turned 14. He has a very loving big sister. I can tell that comes right through, and she is quite a singer. She's got a yeah. She's a great songwriter. She's been playing piano for years. She really can sing. She's fantastic. She's just got a just got a knack for it, and it's uh, yeah. She her videos are on there, and all it's just all sorts of different stuff. And how about Allison? Is she musical at all? Yeah, she grew up. Her her mom was a classical pianist and was a piano teacher. And then she took piano lessons, not from her mom. That never seems to work out. Yeah. Like, you always got to get from somebody else. But anyway, so she's been around. She just loves music, and you know. But she's not really a uh, you know a professional musician or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. One one in the family is enough. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's in store for the future? You're, uh, you've got a pretty ambitious release track record of, uh, of records and songs from Cheap Trick. What's going on now, and what can we look forward to in the future? We uh, just released a single that's, that's going to be on our new album. We've had an album out uh, every, every year now. We've, we, in fact, last year I think we did two LPs because a Christmas one counted. It's the first one we ever did, so... I guess Christmas comes around every year. That doesn't mean we have to do another record every year for that. We'll just leave well enough alone. Well, you could do a follow-up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I doubt it. Okay. But anyway, so uh, we have a new record, then new LP coming out in the fall. You know the title of the new LP yet? No. It's not totally finished, so no no title. And where, where are you doing it? You're in Nashville, right? I live I live in Nashville. We, uh, we, we have been recording a lot mostly in Nashville, but we really kind of do it all over. Is the band kind of spread out, or is everybody in Nashville? No, I'm the only one in Nashville. Okay. All right. Very good. And there 
kind of my signature wrap-up closing question. I, I did ask you this last time, but I'm going to ask you again because it was a great answer, and you may not remember, so let's see what comes out of your mouth. What would you be if you were not a bass player, something outside of music? That I, I really I have no idea. Should I remind you what you said last I, time? I, you can remind me because I have no idea what. You said an astronaut. Oh, I wouldn't have. No, that probably wouldn't have worked out that well. <laughs> you get dizzy or what? No, it sounds kind of creepy, actually. Well, you said that, you know, in high school, I wasn't really into all the stuff all the other kids were doing. I was just into music, and I just wanted to focus on that. So uh, somehow that came around to your rationale for wanting to be an astronaut, the way you explained it. I don't know. I think I just threw that out there. Some I, I, I did that once. I went to the dentist, and I, I was sitting there, and the... the uh, hygienist or something was started talking to me and she goes oh i see um my my boyfriend's in the same line at work you are oh really yeah he's a he's a comedian i said oh really <laughs> said, what are you what, said, what are you talking about oh it says on your you know your this, if i fill out your the form <laughs> I, obviously i had written that in there as occupation did they give you some comedian ne- some, oh, uh, oh thanks I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no idea what she was talking about like oh oh yeah did they it's give nice. you some of that it's gas nice that? Hear about a fellow comedian. Some of that gas that Dennis. Well, yeah, I always take that no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I get some interesting answers to that question. You know, Tommy Stinson from Guns N' Roses. He he didn't bat an eye. He said, "Oh, a, a weatherman. I always wanted to be a TV weatherman." And uh, uh, some. Uh, oh, uh, Doug. Well, yeah, that's a lot of kids are think that's a cool thing. Yeah. Doug Pinnock wants to be a porn star. Yeah, and then he said, "Seriously." Arranged. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> why can, he can still do that, probably, right? I think we're getting off track here, Tom. I, I think uh, it's a good time to wrap it up. But you know what? With your uh, with your releasing a new record every year, I think you've opened it up to uh, a follow-up interview or maybe more than that. And, and uh, congratulations again. I think that is beautiful with the ro- rockyourspeech.com. Check it out and everything else. It's so great sitting down with you. And uh, keep playing that 12-string bass. You might, Can I see the calluses on your fingers there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. How can you have a light touch with... Uh, all right, well, anyway, <laughs> Tom Peterson... It plays itself, basically. I don't think so. I think you have a lot to do with that great sound that comes out. Great getting to, to uh, together again with you. Much luck, all continued right, success. You. Keep it up. Backstage at Pine Knob right w- with our friend Tom Peterson before the Cheap Trick Show. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.